Hello fellow 3D enthusiast. Today I'm going to show you how you can do projection mapping, sometimes also known as camera mapping, and we're going to use this technique to recreate an environment completely from a photo. But before we go on, real quick, I'd like to mention that I've created a completely free hydraulic kit bash element pack for you. So these work best with Blender, and there's a link for them in the description. Now this tutorial is partially inspired by Ian Hubert and all the madness that he's doing over on his lazy tutorials and in his Blender conference talk. But next week I'm going to take it a step further and show you how you can use it to create a really cool visual effect. I'm going to be using Blender 2.8 and this program called FSpy, which I'm 80% sure is not actually spying on me, but we'll see I guess. FSpy, if you haven't heard of it, is completely free and I'll make sure I put a download in the description so you can check that out. And what it basically does is figures out your focal length of the camera of the image you took and the positioning of that camera in 3D space, which if you've ever tried to do manually is a huge pain, and so this program really saves a lot of time. All right, let's get cracking here. First of all, make sure that the FSpy add-on for Blender is enabled. That'll enable us to import all the camera information that it created. Now open up the FSpy program and drop in the image that you're gonna use. Now right off the bat, the image is a little bit dim, and if you want that to be brighter, you can always check this checkbox that says dim image. Or if you'd like that back to how it was, you can check it again. Either way, it's good to be able to see one thing or the other. Pretty much what we want to do in FSpy is line up these green lines with the Y axis in our image, and the red lines with the X axis in our image. And if you just find a couple straight lines that are both facing in one direction, That'll be ideal. If you find that the blue z-axis arrow is pointing down in the middle, you can fix that by just going over to the tool panel on the side, on the left actually, and switching one of those, the y or the x, to be negative. Then just hit file and save as. Find a good place for that. And in Blender, if you hit file and go to import, you should find fspy at the bottom there, and you can just find your file and import it. Once you do that, you can immediately see the camera is imported with the image as a background image, the right aspect ratio, the right positioning, and that's pretty amazing. So now what I'm going to do is just put in some basic modeling, starting from a plane and just extruding and grabbing and moving that around to fit the basic shape of our scene. If you go up to the top here and hit this little drop down, switch that to vertex, that'll change the snapping to make it so that it snaps to vertices. Now when you're grabbing something, you can hit control and it'll just snap although it's a good idea to constrain it to one axis when you're doing that. And when you do that, go into Vertex Select Mode, right-click, and go into the Merge menu and hit Merge by Distance. That way you won't have any double vertices. And then just get in some loop cuts with Control r slide those to put them over big shapes, and just work on getting in some basic form. Once you have things like doors and windows cut out, you can just extrude those inwards. Okay, cool. Here's an important part. Hop into the UV editing workspace, go into edit mode, select all of your mesh, and hit U, and project from view. Now in the image editor, there's a drop down at the top. You can just select your image there, and you can see it's starting to come together. With our object selected, let's add in a new material, switch the shader from principled to emission, and hit the dot next to the color, and where it says image, just hit the drop down and select your image. Now if we hop back into the layout tab, hit Z and go into look dev, or even rendered works, you can see it looks kind of like an ocean. That's, that's a little bit of a problem, which you can solve by adding loads of loop cuts. Control R and scroll up, we'll add in quite a few there. It might be a good idea to finish blocking in the bigger shapes before you do that step. I've pretty much done that by now, so I'd say it's safe. Now this is the fun part, where you can put in loads of cubes and cylinders and put them in approximately the area of the objects in the scene, just to give it a little bit of parallax. It also helps to make it so people don't wonder why there's a car pasted to the ground, because now it's pasted to a cube. And of course, yeah, putting in some rafters is probably a good idea. Once you get one positioned where you like it, you can duplicate that with Shift-D, 
move that to where you like that one, and then hit Shift R a bunch of times, and that will duplicate them all evenly spaced. Nice. So you might notice beyond the camera, there's some weird shapes going on, and that's just because the projection is tiling, and that's actually the other side of the image texture. So what I like to do to fix this is hit K, and I just cut an angle right along that line, select all those faces, and then reproject them somewhere where that actually makes sense. And as the other Ian has mentioned before in his talk, you can put CG objects in this now, and they have great reflections. So that's it for this week's tutorial, but remember to come back next week if you want to see how to make ghosts. Cheers!